What do you think is the strongest reason why Japanese couples aren't having children? Yes, it is definitely finance, but many are worried about education costs for children. If we look at these numbers gathered by a government think tank, it becomes clear that many families hesitate to have more children because of the cost of raising a child, which includes education. And what's really interesting about these numbers is that the more children you want to have, the greater that barrier becomes. While public schooling up to middle school is free, high school and college fees are not free. This has worried many, and in response, a few years ago, the government made high school education free based on household income. Osaka took this a step further and made all high school education free regardless of household income. This makes Osaka the first prefecture to make high school education completely free. This is honestly great news. But let me briefly talk about the current system around Japan before I dive into Osaka's revolutionary plan. Since 2020, the government has been subsidizing high school education for students who attend both public and private schools. The rules get complicated, but the general rule is that households that make less than 9.1 million yen can send their children to public high schools for free. Free education in Japan means free instruction, meaning that other costs such as transportation, uniforms, food, school trips, and etc. are not free. Nonetheless, cutting out instruction costs is still huge. In addition to the government's aid, which spans from 110,000 yen to 400,000 yen, prefectures have their own aid to make high schools generally free as many public schools are roughly around 500,000 yen. Osaka Prefecture used to provide up to 600,000 yen and gradually decreased the amount until the 9.1 million yen ceiling. On August 31st, the mayor announced that both public and private instruction costs will be completely free regardless of a household's income. Public universities will receive the same benefit as well. The mayor ran on a campaign to make high school completely free, and he did it. Free education in Osaka will be gradually implemented from 2024 to 2026. It will first start off with the seniors, and then the juniors, and finally the sophomores freshmen. It's also a big W for the Japan Innovation Party as they're making major reforms in Osaka, but that's for a future video. So as obvious as it might sound, let's talk about the pros of free education. Under the previous restriction, it's very easy for households to pass the 9.1 million yen ceiling if both parents have a full-time job. Now, education becomes accessible without barriers. Students could go to private schools without worrying too much about finance, and the educational barrier is now about competence rather than the family's financial situation. While free education is obviously great news for students and families, this might not be the case for schools. In the previous system, whatever lower-income households couldn't pay, the school was expected to cover the costs. Now that schools are technically free, if your education costs more than 600,000 yen per student, the school is expected to cover those costs. This shouldn't affect public schools because their costs are roughly around 500,000 yen, but private schools would take a major hit. Under the new Osaka's education rule, the burden the private schools have to pay is expected to double. Free education could negatively affect the quality of education as schools are on a tight budget. Certain schools could get overcrowded compared to others. With a lack of funding, schools might have a harder time to hire quality teachers and current building projects might be halted. Certain perks of private schools could also disappear because less funds. Overall, while free education might be great for students and families, and while it may not affect public schools, forcing free education upon private schools might compromise their quality and also hurt their brand. In order to reach a deal with the private schools, the mayor agreed to increase aid by 30,000 yen, so now Osaka will provide 630,000 yen per student in order to provide private schools more funds. So now that you know that free education does come with a cost and private schools might suffer, I'm not trying to put dirt on Osaka's initiative. More prefixtures, in my opinion, should follow the same steps. Again, the challenges that come with free education is not Osaka's fault. The main problem is that the central government isn't doing enough to support education throughout Japan. According to a 2019 OECD report on government aid to education facilities, the OECD's average rate of government aid to education facilities is roughly 4.1% of their GDP. Japan's rate is at 2.8%. This places Japan at 36th place among the 37 member countries. Of course, Japan has the third largest GDP, so maybe this comparison might not be fair. Let's look at different numbers. According to Japan's Ministry of Education, it costs roughly 4.8 trillion yen per year to make education completely free for citizens. When we look at different numbers, 4.8 trillion yen seems like an easy number to achieve. For example, Japan already decided to increase military spending by 43 trillion yen over the next 5 years. If Japan can increase military spending, I'm sure they could find ways to increase spending on education as well. 
So let's quickly look at Japan's expenditure to see whether I'm correct. When we look at the pie chart on the left, we can quickly realize that 4.8 trillion yen is hard to gather from nowhere. This amount of money is roughly 5% of Japan's expenditure, but that doesn't mean that Japan cannot find money. Earlier this year, Japan established the Children and Family Agency. This new agency has a budget of 4.8 trillion yen. So what exactly is the Children and Family Agency? The goal of this agency is to create policies that benefit children. This includes all of the following. It's a good thing that Japan has this new agency to place children at the spotlight, but this agency lacks power. For example, it can provide advice to other ministries, but it cannot force them to make changes. So this begs the question whether this agency is actually worth it. Over the summer, many Japanese citizens got mad against this agency because this agency made a contract with the J-League. The motive is to encourage families to spend time together. That's awesome, but I feel like my taxpayer money could be used in a different way to support families. This 4.8 trillion yen budget also pays for salaries, right? Unfortunately, not everything can be used for children. Japan can keep the Children and Family Agency for now, but if they can find 4.8 trillion yen on this new agency, they can definitely find the same amount of money from the budget by cutting down on other expenditure. Perhaps making things completely free is difficult, but they could do more than what they are currently doing. For now, Osaka is attempting a real change, and I hope this changes Japan. What are your thoughts on free education? Should the government make education free? Furthermore, do you think free education could solve Japan's population crisis? I would love to hear your thoughts. Like the video if you learned something new, and subscribe to learn more about Japanese politics.